Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk to you about a young lady who is in prison now. She's Argentinian and her name is Nahir Galarza. Now, I don't know if I am pronouncing that right, but she's the 19 year old girl who killed her boyfriend. Now, I wanna talk about the social implications of this case because I've gotten on here before and I've talked about how we live in such an age that is um, polarized and um, it seems like empathy is really something that is lacking these days and people oftentimes who don't show empathy are raised up to this super level human status by I guess what you would call an alternative media or alternative culture you know people like Andrew Tate and um you know the people who go after Harry and Meghan we talk about them in our videos you know people who are proudly supporting causes that are to the detriment of other people I feel like we live in a day and age where that is almost glorified as as being something cool cool but guys it'll never be cool now I think that this case even though it's Argentinian, points to the dangers of social media and it also points to the dangers of poor mental health amongst all ages, but specifically young people. And um, I did a video about Gabby Petito and sort of how I feel like her parents, her friends, society missed those signs. They basically missed those signs of domestic abuse, of domestic violence. And I feel like that is something that is very common and we need to dismiss this part of our society. Now, I think that this Nahir Galaza um, story, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it because I actually had a lot, of, a lot of trouble finding information about it. Like, it was literally in Argentina, so almost every single thing that I saw on YouTube about it was in Spanish. And thankfully, I saw one on Reston Pudon, Reston Pudon, which is um, a French channel, and I speak French. So I was able to get most of the information I know about it from a French channel. But um, I feel like this is something that we really need to emphasize more and that we need to talk about more because this age of social media um, is almost exacerbating our mental health crisis, you know, as just society these days, general society. It's, it seems like at times it's not making it better, it's making it worse. And the fact that we can raise awareness on these things, the fact that we can have these conversations, that helps it. But um, for the most part, I feel like social media is making it so, so, so much worse. Now, um, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, guys. So basically, um, for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> Nahir Galarza, so when she was, I believe, 16 or 17, she started dating uh, her boyfriend. Her, bo her boyfriend's name was Fernando Pastorizo. Now, Nahir, she was a, a girl brought up in privilege in her city outside. It's near um, Uruguay. I think it's near Uruguay in Argentina. I'm from a small city near Uruguay. So they both lived in Uruguay. Long story short, and I'm going to make this quick. She was dating this guy. They were young, in high school. High school sweethearts fell in love. She was the mean girl, okay? She was the mean girl at school who she showed up to a party and two girls had on the same dress and she verbally and physically abused this girl because they had on the same dress. This is the girl who abused people in her class, made fun of them, bullied them over Snapchat. This is that girl. And she fell in love with this, for in all intents and purposes, nice guy from a very humble background. And she herself came from a background of privilege because her dad worked for the Argentinian police force. And her family had always sort of pumped her up her, her boyfriend, I'm sorry, her brother had special needs. And so her family sort of put all of their eggs into her, put all their eggs in one basket. And that bred an utter malignant, narcissistic sociopath. 
psychopath. I mean, this girl is a psychopath. So, um, this guy that she was dating never really solidified things with her officially. You know, he never really committed to her as like, you're my girl. I'm in this with you. We are, you know, going, going to the top together, baby. Like, this is us. We're official. He never really professed that for her. You know, it was almost like he saw that not everything was right. They would get into these crazy arguments. She had raging jealousy to the point of where he was just with his dad. He was just with his dad or with his family, with his friends. And she would be texting him, calling him constantly, Snapchatting, buzzing him, binging him, everything. Where are you at? Where are you at? Da, 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 da. You know, and again, these are children, you know, these are children. Before she even, you know, they, before they left for college and all of that stuff, they were children. And they were clearly having sex, you know, and it doesn't seem like any of their parental figures was sort of stepping in to maybe put that into check or put that into perspective. Um, I often wonder what the heck was going on with Fernando's uh, parents because it seems like he was having troubles with this relationship. He kept going back for the sex, but you can you can clearly see there was something wrong there, you know, constantly them calling back and forth, having all these arguments and things like that. So again, just like I talked in the Gabby Petito video, parents out there, people, when you hit these, when you get these flags of your friends and your family, whether they are the abuser in the type of a relationship like this or they're the abused, keep your eyes open, you know, say something, speak up, call the police if you need to. Take a mental health intervention, but, um, Anyway, so they have been going back and forth and all of this stuff. And the first red flag I would say is that Fernando went to a party, you know, just because she was there and she was there with her girlfriend. And they left the party. She said, hey, why don't we, why don't we go back to the house or whatever? I don't know if it was her house or his house. And they went back to the house and she and her friend beat him. They, they beat him up. So I feel like that should have been the first warning sign for his family to be like, listen, this girl is nuts. Go ahead. Let that go. That's not the right thing. Still, he goes back. The way that this ends basically is them again being at a party, I believe. Um, them going back to her place or his place, hopping on his, his moped. And she takes her father's service gun, shoots him cold-blooded at five o'clock in the morning walks away from the crime scene coldly calculated nothing we see her on cctv walking away from the crime scene leaves him there to die you know and it was funny because an observer of this he had seen before she actually shot him he had uh driven by and seeing them arguing. And then when he drove back, I guess going back to his home or going back to wherever he was going, um, he saw him on the ground gurgling, grasping, gasping for his life. And he was trying to say something and, and then he unfortunately died. And she's pretending all this time that, oh, I didn't have anything to do with him. The, the, with the. Guys, this right here points to so many things that we need to take a look at as society. You know, she had basically risen up to mean girl status of what is, you know, ideal in this world. She was thin. She was beautiful. You know, she, she had really cute little Gen Z outfits and uh, cute little Gen Z makeup and um, very good at Snapchatting superficial stuff but what was behind that and you know to see her parents they knew something was wrong they should have had her in therapy a long long time ago this right here points to poor mental health this is something we need to speak about and it's something that a taboo we just need to pull that taboo one out of there if you see that your child your daughter your friend your cousin your sister your brother your uncle anybody your father if you see that they're struggling with poor mental health say something say something speak to them and say listen i love you i think that something is wrong 
just the way that if you had a if you were sick and you had a flu you would go to the doctor to get something to help you i think that something is wrong up here and i i i love you and i think that you need to go get some help um i think it also points to a bigger issue of social media now so much of this especially with young people you know and i see this here in france where i live and i saw that in the u.s as well um Social media is a breeding ground for bullying among of, among young people. You know, just the way that I feel like, you know, sex, sex amongst young people, that young people might not really be ready in a maturity sense for sex. Some young people, I feel like, really are not ready for social media. Their parents need to really observe and monitor their activity on social media um, and do something about it. Don't be a complicit parent. Don't just sit there and let your child go down the wrong road, you know. But the thing is, is a lot of these people, their parents are coming from trauma. Their parents are coming from an abusive dynamic, whether that be emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever it is. They're coming from an abusive environment. So it's like they're coming to the table without a full deck, trying to parent a child and their child might be falling down the wrong avenue. This points to a bigger issue in society, guys. And you know what I find so funny? I know that I can hardly talk about any other subject without talking about Harry and Meghan. But, you know, the fact that Christopher Boozy, you know, for those of you who watch my Harry and Meghan videos, Christopher Boozy is the guy who did the investigation. His startup did the investigation into that hate campaign. This hate campaign that's been brewing against Meghan Markle. Um, the slew, the constant slew of articles, you know, full of lies, go out into the world. And these uninformed, gullible, you know, people maybe who already are racist and see this stuff, and this just pumps them up. Ooh, I got something to hate her about. You know, they go and then they spread all of this hate to their circles within social media. You know, $3 million, $3 million um, market for hating Harry, um, for hating Meghan Markle on YouTube. That's just YouTube. That's just YouTube. So not to consider even Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, you know, everywhere people are hating on this woman. And they want to say it's because of this, 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 and this. But we know it is because of institutional racism. But beyond that, it's also the same level of us glorifying so sociopaths, us glorifying um people lacking in empathy on social media. If that is your type of humor, that says so much about you. Oh, it's just all in good fun. It's not that serious. If that is your type of humor, you need to take a look at yourself. But social media, you know, whether it be for adults or young people, can be a breeding ground of harassment and bullying. Now, Christopher Boozy, he is the one who stood up for uh, Harry and Meghan, and he is the one who heads up the startup that basically um, discovered and analyzed that hate campaign. But he also has started his own social media app called Spoutable, which is really cool. If you want to check it out, check it out. Um, but I know a lot of haters are out there. And he is receiving all of this criticism because now Nate the Lawyer is coming after him and all of his cronies are coming after him. And do you know what Spoutable, ironically, do you know what the mission of Spoutable is? The mission of Spoutable and his startup bot Sentinel that does investigation into online harassment, the mission of both of these companies, he literally started them with the intention of providing awareness and advocating for a more equal and less harassing, less negative, abusive environment in social media. Why are these the people that are being, vilica being vilified people? You got to sit there and ask yourself that. Why are the people like Andrew Tate being put up on a pedestal and people like Christopher Boozy being, trying to be knocked down a few? But I think 
feel like this Nahir Galarza situation, it points to how important what Christopher Boozy is doing, how important that, that initiative is. Because we keep seeing this. The fact that it affects young people so badly, this really should have people wanting to do something about it. The fact that abuse is affecting young people. You know, you look at Snapchat, you look, like, you look at TikTok, you look at Instagram, and kids are getting bullied and abused and harassed there. And either they go and they take their own lives or somebody else takes their life. People, wake up. Wake up because young people are looking at you. So that's all I got to say about not here, Galarza. Guys, tell me what you think in the comments. This, this story broke my heart. And I kept seeing it in Spanish, and I don't speak Spanish. And so when I finally saw it on Reston Pudo, um, on the French channel, I was so happy because I, I was like, oh my god, I can finally understand what they're talking about. Um, it is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. This is such... Uh, an important thing that raises the point that we need to take a look at social media and the way that young people interact on social media and we need to take a look at abusive relationships from any gender whether male or female and we need to take a look at um, mental health so I'm going to leave you guys with that sending you lots of love see you in the next one